Hi everybody, it's Agnes and today I've got a lovely woman from the USA, Teresa is here with us. Hello Teresa. Hello. Thank you for coming to talk to us. Thank we, you for having me. Yeah, good, good. We, you and I had a few emails and uh, we decided to do this interview because of the the real benefits of talking about meditation what it does what it does for you so you have said yes to come on and talk about how you use meditation and the benefits that you've gotten from it and you also joined one of the live meditations recently and um which was quite a long one it was an hour uh, meditation that you did with us so i'm going to hand it over to you so you can talk about yeah just any of that bits and pieces Sure. Well, I love that hour meditation. I ended up falling asleep, I think, the last 10 minutes. And yeah. I woke up right when everybody was exiting. And I was like, okay, I don't know what happened in the end, but it felt really good. And yeah. I had a really great sleep. And so I'm actually looking forward to doing the recording on my own. Lovely. Um, but I really love meditating, especially at night. It's my favorite going to sleep. Um, I find guided works better. If I'm not doing a guided meditation, I will generally fall asleep within a few minutes mm -hmm. um, or my mind will go and wander and I have to keep bringing it back. But um, guided will tend to keep me on track for a lot longer, which I enjoy. Um, and I also do a lot in nature. Mm -hmm. A lot of, um, if I go out and if I'm hiking or if I'm um, by the ocean, I will spend like 20 or 30 minutes just standing, you know, partially in the water or sitting in the sand and just meditating. And I find that to be the most calming mm. and I can stay focused. Um, a lot of times I'm also moving light. Like when I'm meditating, I might be focusing on light, moving it from, you know, above me and through me and through the yep. earth and back. Yeah. Um, I tend to, to move energy that way. Okay. while okay. meditating as well lovely it's you, very balancing it is it is it really is and you know you and I had a bit of a chat before we started about that while we're trying to manifest something whether it's a relationship or more money or a better job or whatever you often have anxiety or fear or when's it going to happen or whatever going on within you so doing meditation is really an important probably i think one of the most important steps to calm the emotional state down so that you can then attract those things and it just makes you feel better in the day or in that moment anyway irregardless of that so so what do you think about that Teresa? Um, I think it's the best way for me. It's the best way. Unless I'm watching a movie that is just making me laugh really hard. Yeah. I find meditation being the fastest way to, um, calm and feel that joy, like the higher vibrational states. Mm. I find that to be the fastest way to get there. And whether I'm manifesting something or not, just having that peace inside, you feel better and you just, yeah. I think you're more in the moment and enjoying life, which is I think number one important part before you're even manifesting, you have to feel good. Yeah. I, I don't know that I've ever manifested anything good when I've had bad feelings about something. If I'm yeah. worried about something, if I'm really sad about something, I'm not able to get myself in a place that's going to allow me to move forward the way I want to. And so in order to do that, um, meditation and it doesn't even have to be long it doesn't even have to be organized because sometimes i can get stuck in the details and i think okay yeah. i have to have a meditation corner and it has to be clean and the house has to be quiet yeah. and i have to have my essential oils and then sometimes <laughs> i'm like okay it's not you don't have to do all that you can just relax in the yeah. moment and even just do it for three minutes even yeah um there's focusing on your breath and yeah. I don't know how I feel about emptying your mind completely because I have a very hard time. I start to over focus on that and then it doesn't yeah. happen, yeah. which I think is why guided works for me better because then I can mm. kind of let go and I don't have to think. <laughs> yeah. I just follow it and then it's able, I'm able to relax better. Mm. And then like you say, you drift off to sleep because you're right. You've been right. focusing on the breath. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think focusing on the breath just especially in that first sort of 10 minutes, it 
it just mm-hmm. brings your frequency down that rushing what am i got to do next what's going on it just slows all that down and then your mind starts to slow down too to go with it right and and then yeah the guided part i think too like you do a guided then you have a little period in the middle where it's a silent thing that you can right. actually imagine your own thing because you've again wound yes. down a bit further yeah i do love those actually when there's some talking in the beginning but yeah. you know that there's something still going on that someone's still there you hear a little bit of something but they're not mm. telling you you know what you're doing they're not guiding you through a visualization for a few moments yeah exactly and um yeah and i do it a lot in the car but mm. i find um, usually driving to work <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I start work off in a very good mood because I have my meditations and I'll mix in my affirmations and I just do that on the way to work. Lovely. Um, but my favorite is honestly being barefoot in nature. Yeah. Or sleeping, about to sleep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's something about that freedom of nature, open spaces, green trees, grass. Mm-hmm. Just there's nothing like it. the beach. There yeah. is that is a meditation in itself. It really is. It's yeah. like a color therapy and a sound therapy mm. at once when you're in nature. Mm. Mm. Do you find it helps you with surrender and letting go? Like if, if you've got something that you're hanging on to mentally too tightly, does it help you with that? Yes. And I was actually just telling one of my best girlfriends, I think the beach is even stronger for me because each time I've been to the beach, like barefoot yeah. and spent a couple hours just by the water and in the sand, I come back feeling a different level of mm-hmm. peacefulness and calmness, and I'm able to let go of so much more, even than just a hike, um, yeah. even doing stuff on my own for a couple months. Like just one day at the beach is able mm. to do that at a different level. So energetically, I think there's something there. Yeah. I don't know exactly what, but for yeah. me, I know that's probably the most powerful that I've discovered. Mm. And yeah. um, yes, I, I can completely let go of a lot of things mm, after having that kind of time. Yeah. I agree with you because in Sydney, I'm near the beach pretty much every day. In London, I'm not. But when I'm in Sydney, that is one of my, I just make sure I walk on the beach and then I do affirmations and then I sit for a while, you know, and just, and in Australia, the beaches are so, I mean, there's just miles and miles yeah. of beach. You could be there totally on your own or have two people there, you know, and there's like seven kilometers of beach. So you really feel free. You really feel like you can just let go and not, you're not distracted by people so much. So. Right. Yeah. You know, one of the more powerful and recent um, beach meditations I had I was standing um, in the water. There was a full moon. I yeah. was standing in the water uh, just for like 10 or 15 minutes, and I'm, I'm doing my calm breathing, and then I start doing affirmations of, you know, I'm successful, I have abundance, I am, you know, all these wonderful, I do goddess statements and everything. Yeah. But I'm calling abundance to me and love and joy. And um, I look down and I see like this patch of seaweed kind of getting close to where I'm standing and I don't want it to touch me. So I backed up about a foot. And right when I backed up, the wave brought the water down. So, you know, when the waves come back, it like yeah. reveals more of the beach. And there was a, a, a turtle right there, like within a foot of me. So the seaweed was actually a turtle. And it was one of those really big ones. Um, I, I don't know. He must have been a hundred years old. He was just so large. What? And I startled him because he wasn't expecting me there because the water went away. And I was just in awe. Like the only thing I could say was like, baby. And I, I was so moved by it because I was sitting here calling all this abundance to me. Mm. And I don't know what it means, but it was just very touching. Right. And, um, Lovely. I told all my friends, hey, I saw a turtle, but I didn't have a picture because it happened so quickly. He got into the water and moved out of my way. Yeah. But he was like within a foot of me. And it's like stuff like that that happens when mm. you're in nature where yeah. it may not mean anything, but it's enough to make you smile and feel more connected. Mm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think nature, I don't know, it's like it responds to you and quickly and quickly i remember i was on this retreat once when i was in my hippie phase in the 90s and i was in this um 
I'd gone out on like it was a nature retreat and we did, you were doing meditation and, you know, all sorts of different bits and pieces. We sat down, we were in the middle of this valley and we were camping in the middle of these two mountains and it was in Australia and we were all sitting around. There would have been, I don't know, 12, 15 people and the person facilitating it. And we went into this meditation and it was, it was just a still warm up summer afternoon. And all of a sudden this massive wind came up and it just ripped through the campsite and it nearly blew your hair off your head. It was just the weirdest thing. And then it stopped just as suddenly as it started. It, it did it for five minutes and just this massive wind and then it just whoosh, died down. And then these two eagles started to, well, in, in Australia, they're not eagles, they're seahawks, I think. They started circling up above where we were and they continued to do that for about 30 minutes. And then we opened our eyes. I, I mean, I saw them because I peeked. I could hear them. So I opened my eyes to see what it was. And then all of a sudden, we all, we finished the meditation and I looked up, they did like one or two more circles and then they took off. And it was just that really incredible, did that happen all in that timing because we were meditating? Was that, you know, it's like you with a turtle. You just go, what the heck was that? I will never forget that. It was like nature just came. It, it, yeah. it, like, the, the, the elements and the animals just came into that space and we were right in this V-shaped valley and it was, it was a powerful moment. I will never forget it. <laughs> That makes me feel when people say they talk about energy vortex in different parts of the world yeah. and I've never um, tried to go and experience it, but it makes me think it has mm. to be powerful. Yeah. I should go do that. <laughs> that should be yeah. my next vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful story, especially with the wind. When you think about it, it's almost like the breath of God or the universe yeah. coming in and just saying, I'm there. I hear I you know. or. You're on the right path. It reminded me of like the Tarzan movies, you know, when Tarzan calls out and then all the animals come to help him. It was like one of those, you know, like it was just like, and then, and there was not a a scrap of wind that whole morning. And after that, there was nothing either. It was literally for five minutes. That was it. So, wow, 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 wow. Is it Neville or, and, or I can't remember her name, Um, Florence Scoville Shin? One or both of them say how we have dominion over nature with yeah. our, our words and our thoughts. Mm. So, I mean, it yeah. makes sense that we would be able to call yeah. and have an influence energetically. Yeah. If you're in the, right, in the right vibe to match nature, yeah, that would make sense. That would so make- if you're, yeah, the right type of meditation would definitely get you there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like stumbling into something totally unexpected, you know. It was really like, wow, what is going on here? And I will, <laughs> That's uh, really cool. yeah, it was what, nearly, th- well, it was probably 30 years ago when I started meditating. So it was just one of those incredible experiences in the first couple of years of meditating that I've never had that experience since. So, you know, it was a good experience to have straight at the beginning because it set the benchmark right. for everything after that. I wonder if that valley has some history. Like, I don't with, know. I don't even remember yeah. where it is now because it was so. Uh, I, I know it was somewhere out of Sydney a couple of hours, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't even remember where it was. I've got no recollection. But it was the the memory is in the emotion of that moment. It's like I right. It's like I can still, if I shut my eyes, remember the exact feeling of it and the exact sound of those birds. It's amazing, amazing. I wonder if so, some of the original people that were there, there mm. you know, time and space when it collapsed. What if it yeah. was everyone who's ever been meditating there through history yes. all at once? Yeah. Or maybe even <laughs> Aboriginal ground. Who knows? You exactly. Know, it's country probably with, sacred. Yeah, it could be. Because the, the, um, the areas that we would go to to do, I mean, I was doing a lot of retreaty sort of things in those days. The um, It was always out in the bushes somewhere out in, you know, those native, what do you call it? Um, national parks Mm -hmm. that were owned by the government. So 
yeah, and, and a lot of the government land was originally owned by the Aboriginals. So, yeah. There's Same the, here. I find it powerful when I go to national parks here too. Yeah. Like more powerful to me. Mm. It's interesting. It is. It is. So do you want to, is there anything you want to say about connecting the meditation with manifesting? Um, manifesting, I think, is very... Sorry, not manifesting. Meditating. Yeah. <laughs> you can edit that part out. <laughs> no, I'll leave it. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> um, I think meditation is probably number one first important. Self-care. I put self-care at the top when you're first, especially if you're first on a mission to try and manifest something in particular, yeah. especially if it involves other people for any reason whatsoever, your self-care is really important. And so how you yeah. care for yourself physically, nutritionally, water, everything you can think of nature, yeah. but then coming into the meditation where you're calming yourself down energetically Mm -hmm. um, and you're coming to a level place. Yeah. Um, I don't, I haven't had a point where I can consciously work on trying to, to call something to me. If I'm not calm, if I'm not at a peaceful yeah. place and if you're holding on really, really tight yeah. to whatever you want, yeah. that energy is going to be felt yeah. by other people. Yeah. And so when you do start relaxing, which I think, for me personally, meditation helps yeah. um, very quickly. Um, I mean, I can feel a relaxation. I can feel the waves come through me within a few moments um, mm. meditating. And I think when you start to release and you're able to feel that, even mm. with breathing, even if you do it three to five minutes in the morning before you go to work or at night, <clears throat> I think that's one of the bigger, the bigger parts to be able to start manifesting what you want. Yeah. It's almost like yeah. like when you put your iPhone on the charger, it's the same. It just it's like a personal charger when you do your meditation, and then like you say, the the leveling out because that's the thing that I think I see when I when I'm working with people or in the Q and As or whenever I see read emails is there's kind of a common thread when people want something and they really really want it and they won't let it go. I'm anxious, I'm fearful I won't get it, how's it going to happen and when's it going to happen? They're kind of the four main things that are always coming up over and over and over. And the thing is, if you're anxious and fearful, that is a repellent. It's an energy that blocks what you want. It stops what you want. So the meditation is to level it down, let it go, mm -hmm. relax, breathe in, breathe out, put the love in where the fear was or activate the love. And then you dispel the fear, you dispel the anxiety, you dispel the worry or the how or when or whatever you've got going on because you're not letting go of the desire, you're letting go of all that other stuff that's around it. And mm -hmm. meditation is, I think, the quickest way to let go of that stuff. And then you just bring in, I just find things come in so easily when you're in that state. I agree. And it's kind of interesting. I start to notice things that I let go of even years ago start coming back when you've totally forgotten it and even if I'm, I'm working on something different right now I know like I 100% have this confidence that what I want will come because it always does yeah right yeah um, and just relaxing and knowing that your the time and space you can't define it the way we try to mm. and it is happening on some other realm or some other way the energy is out there once you create that energy it's not destroyed it's going out it will come back yeah and so if you can relax into that and if meditating helps you relax into it and i think a lot of people who who want to manifest something if they take that time and actually focus on them do some mm. meditation i would say even you know someone's working on an sp why don't you just leave it alone for a couple weeks? Don't yeah. even think about it. And I think a lot of people might get fearful. Well, I don't want to mm. let go of this energy, mm. but that's the energy you might need to let go of. Focus yeah. on the meditation yeah. and see what magic happens. Yeah, it's true. It's It'll almost come. like you think that your specific person or the job or the money or whatever is your, your big prize at any given time. It's like, if I'm not thinking about it or putting energy into it, 
then it won't happen. But it's like the other side of the coin is this stuff. It's the inactivity. It's the allowing. It's the letting go. It's the surrender. That creates a vacuum or a space for the universe to bring it to you because you've actually removed the fear and the anxiety that kept the handbrake on so it didn't come to you in the first place. Right. So, but it's like it's so easily... Um, what's the word? Un underlooked, if that, yeah. if that makes sense. It's, it's people o overlook. That's the word. People overlook the meditation because it's like, well, that doesn't relate to me manifesting those three things or whatever. But it is one of the biggest things because you're changing the fear into love. You're you're letting mm -hmm. go of the thing that's handbreaking it. So. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of people are afraid to let go of yeah. a thought um, yeah. because they think that'll they're not interested anymore or it's not going to manifest. But yeah. if you can release all of that, you might be surprised mm. at how fast. Yeah. It's just something you said reminding me. I have a really good friend who um, does this naturally. He doesn't even know that he's doing it. And I actually mentioned something to him because he's, he's always in a really good mood. Yeah. And he's probably not even kidding gotten 20 speeding tickets in the last year okay gets away with them <laughs> he does it they don't go on his record and I know that sounds awful because it's speeding but he's yeah. like in a good mood yeah. he's always smiling and the cops pull him over he's like you know what's the rush and he's like you know I'm going to work or whatever but he does not either get the ticket or it gets removed quickly from his record and that's just an example he has a lot of stuff that he does at work too yeah he gets extra vacation time and I'm telling you like two weeks extra because wow. you know he'll just do something and they'll be like oh you know what don't worry about it take the day off um yes you can you know go to take that trip but it's because he's always positive yeah he's always like he knows good things are going to happen he doesn't mm. ever worry and I I mentioned something to him the other day I go I he goes, I don't believe in God, but God's doing all this great stuff for me. And I said, well, what if it's inside of you? What yeah. if it's because you don't ever think about the negative part? You don't sit around and have a negative conversation with your boss. Yeah. You just know that she's going to say, yes, you know, you can have that or you can do that. You know that if someone pulls you over, that they're going to like be charmed by whatever that mm. magic is that he has. Yeah. And you're not actually going to get in trouble. Yep. Whereas, you know, a lot of other people, you could be driving, you're like, you know what, I feel like I'm going to get pulled over. And you start to think about it. And then sure enough, it happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's something about that. And it's thinking positively. Yeah. And I know that sounds, um, it sounds cliche to say, but it means not so focusing on yep. the negative thoughts. Like if you catch yourself getting mad at someone or replaying an old conversation or even an imaginary negative conversation, mm. just release it, let it go because that's what creates the negative and the lower vibrational yep. field. Yeah. And then you focus on that, what it's pulled in and then you get another thing of it that matches that vibration and on and on it goes. So if you, you don't have a natural, if you don't have that natural ability, because I think some personalities can be naturally higher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If that's not your natural state, then I think meditating is yeah. going to be one of the easiest ways to get it back. Yeah. To bring it there. Yeah. Wise words. That is well <laughs> said. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I agree with you. I've never thought of it that way. But yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. I do think some people are more naturally, you know, whether it's their childhood or just who they are when they were born, you know, there's mm -hmm. some people just naturally have that a bit more than others. That's true. I definitely see that. Uh, we've done a lot yeah. of at work. We play along with the, um, the Meyer Briggs testing. I don't have know what ever? that is. No, it's um, it's a personality test, and yeah. um, I ha I find a lot of I it's you know that psychologists came up with it, so there's obvious scientific backing to it. But I do find different personalities consistently yeah. are higher, yeah, you know, happier, more carefree, and then others yeah. a lot more serious, yeah. Um, and they're gonna respond. You're gonna respond differently to situations. That's how you filter wow. your world. Is that something yeah. people can look up online? Oh, yes. Yeah, you can actually take the test for free. Okay. I think it's, I think it's 16 personalities, but you just type in Myers-Briggs personality test and you could take it free online. 
Okay. And, I'll look um, it up and I'll put a link down below. Briggs double G. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause those so, things are interesting to do. Yeah, they are. I, I find them fun. I'm always yeah. fascinated. I'm usually asking people what their type is. <laughs> I remember doing one when I was in grade seven and I've still got it. I've still got it because it was so interesting. So my daughter has been taking it. She's almost 18 and her test has been the same since she was 16. So I yeah. think that a core part of your personality, if they take the test even younger, is still yeah. going to come out uh, mostly the same. There might be one letter that changes mm. um, or toggles back and forth depending on when you take the test and the kind of mood that you're in. Yeah. But um, I think the core part of you is definitely something that can be discovered at a younger age, like seventh grade, like it would be probably yeah. the same or similar. Yeah. Yes. You would be drawn to similar or just, to, you'd have certain just character traits and skills that you've got and that you, things that you're drawn to naturally because of that. So, right. yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Who thought we'd <laughs> about that on this interview? <laughs> well, do you yeah. want to say anything to close anything? last words of any sort oh man i would just say take some time in nature and meditate mm -hmm. maybe barefoot just that whole yeah. grounding thing like yeah. a lot of people think it does, it's not true but there are scientific backing you know having your foot yeah. on the ground in the dirt in the sand yeah. in the grass even concrete is better than just being in the house <sighs> put your feet outside yeah. on the ground and just like do some breaths and that alone. Yeah. That alone. Um, I do that when I'm stressed. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. stomach, you know, something going on. You have, when I was in school, I would do that a couple times a day. Yeah. yeah. So I would say ground yourself, go in nature and yeah. Find some time to meditate, even if it's just a few minutes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All of that to get more emotionally balanced and at peace and more relaxed. And the more you relaxed you are, Mm -hmm. just that it just makes the day better for you and for those around you <laughs> I agree and you know what it's contagious because at yeah. work um I have people you know before they'd be like hey you're too happy all the time or you're too this or that it's like yes but you love coming to work don't you yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you know I'm gonna make you smile it's yeah. like you have to like I don't know I you just yeah. spread the energy <laughs> yeah like that, remember the interview, I don't know if you saw it with Seth and he'd go to work and he'd say, I love my life, I love my life, I love my life. And then he said he'd walk into the office and some of the people would say it to him when he'd walk into the office. Oh, that's cute. I didn't see that one. I like it though. Yeah, he's 18. And he would well, do, doing law of attraction and he, that's what he would do in his workplace. I thought, good for him. I mean, I walk into the building saying similar things too. Yeah. And sometimes I think if they hear me, they might be wondering because they'd be like, I am goddess, I am divine. <laughs> I actually did say something about being a goddess to some of the guys at work and they were laughing pretty hard, but they don't realize it. But now that's yeah. in their mind. That's in their mind. Yeah, exactly. I've got a friend, I've got a girlfriend, um, she said we were talking about goddesses or something a long years ago. And she said to me, you know, I've got a different version for you. And I said, what is it? And she said, I'm going to take the G from goddess and put it at the end. So she calls me Odess G. <laughs> I like that. I liked it, too. it was very <laughs> strange. <laughs> I was just got a funny mind that she actually worked that out. And it just looks strange when you write it. So I use that as, you know, Sometimes when I'm it's cute. come up with a new password or something, that always comes to mind. <laughs> Odyssey. You Odyssey. know what? Speaking of passwords, I always look at things backwards. So yeah. I always tend ah, to well, there you go. go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's well, we're going to say goodbye. And um, Teresa, thank you so much for coming. It's been a good little chat interview with you. Fabulous. And now you're frozen, so you can't say goodbye, but I'm going to say thank you and hope you enjoyed the interview, everybody. And yeah, to be continued. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>